afternoon, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this end of the Sunset Sunday Snake Safari. Yes, that's correct. Uh, my name is James Hendry. Very good. And, uh, you, of course, are with Fergus and I. Hello, Fergus. And we'd love to hear from you. Hashtag Safari Live is how you get hold of us. I'm now going to swing swiftly to the right, as is Fergus. Where we have some elephants with no snakes upon them and some giraffe, also devoid of any snakes on them. I suppose if you happen to be a giraffe or an elephant, World Snake Day is not an important day for you. You don't really like snakes, I imagine. In fact, I imagine many of our viewers, while having a healthy respect for snakes, wouldn't like to find one in their bed, for example. I wouldn't like to find one in my bed. Anyway, that is a beautiful herd of elephants. Our plan this afternoon, other than finding all the snakes in the Masai Mara, is to head towards one of the main crossing points where, if you've been watching the Safari Live Facebook stream, you'll know that we have had a number of zebra crossings already today, and I wondered if we wouldn't try and go along there and see if we couldn't pick some up using, uh, well, Fergus's skills this end, as opposed to Steph or Scott and my skills at the river cams. Sally, you want to see a black mamba today. Sally, I will do my best to find a black mamba. Um, I, it won't be a close-up shot, I'll tell you that for free. I was very happy to go and catch snakes in the rooms of the lodges where I used to work, all except for the mamba. The, uh, the tool employed to go and fetch a mamba is normally a shotgun. Uh, that's slightly facetious, of course, but it is. if you are not a highly skilled snake catcher, it's not a very good idea to try and catch one. They're very fast and get very upset very quickly. Cobras much more slow, much more docile, and but mumbas tend to be a lot more irascible. Larger also, terrifying. It's a little bit of weather on the horizon, on, well, sort of to the eastern side, or, yeah, eastern side of where we're sitting now, and we'll try and avoid that. The last time Fergus and I came out, we were attacked mercilessly by a vicious storm that uh, came in from the south. If we look over there towards the sort of northeast, you can see a blackening of the skies, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, the wind is blowing that away. I think it was sitting on top of us a little bit earlier. Earlier. And so I'm hoping by the time we continue, well, by the time we end this drive, it won't be anywhere near us and it'll be a long way north of here, which is a good thing. We'll hopefully be drawing the large herds of wildebeest in this way. Marvellous. Right, we're going to continue. See if we can't catch up with one of the crossings. It is a glorious day. Apparently, I'm told, about 24 degrees Celsius, 75 Fahrenheit. I think that feels about right. Yes, I think it is about right. But some chilly mornings of late, huge amount of rain yesterday. And, well, it's just very inspirational to be out of here. And I hope many of you who watched enjoyed our TV show on Friday. Willow Wanderer, you're wondering about if there are many kinds of snakes here in the Mara. Uh, yes, there are many kinds of snakes. There are different kinds to the Sabi sands. Um, I think one of the most obvious different ones is something called a red cobra, which is unsurprisingly a cobra that is red. Jumbo! Somebody? I don't know. I saw somebody up there just now, uh, just around that where that giraffe is. So if you head up there, you might be lucky. Okay. He asked me where the lion was. I don't know where the lion was. I moved on swiftly, of course, because the person in the back seat decided he'd take a picture of me. It does astound me how many people will um, see you and then just start taking pictures. I mean, would you go up to somebody in a shopping centre and just start taking pictures of them? No, I don't think you would. Anyway, the, the red cobra is one of them. Scott Dyson has a puff adder skin, which I have uh, pilfered from him and put into the 
studio, or into the migration control as we now call it, uh, this big. I've never seen a puff adder that size in the Sabi sand in South Africa. So I guess we can see bigger puff adders. But I have to say, uh, snake-wise, I haven't seen a snake here yet, and so I really am not very sure as to what's going on with all the snakes. We're going to head across to Tristan, who's continuing with the snake narrative. Not with a snake, but with a bird that likes to eat a snake.